Today I'm going to talk about boundary finding. So we've seen edge detectors such as Canny and Sobel operators. Uh, those detect edge points, which are again places in the image where we have local intensity discontinuities. Um, doesn't depend on what the image is of. Uh, we don't need a model um, of the object to detect edges. But uh, boundaries are composed of many points, many edge points. Um, and this may be dependent on what model we're, um, what we have for the object that we're looking at. And typically our goal is to reconstruct the boundary from local edge elements for the purpose of, say, recognizing an object. So the first problem is we want to group um, edge elements so that we can fit a, a boundary to them, such as a line or a curve. So if we were interested in a line segment, for example, we might select these points to group together to fit a uh, line segment to them. The task uh, can be helped if you have more knowledge about the boundary or the shape of the object that you're looking at. Um, if you have complete shape, if you have a complete knowledge of the shape, um, then that that you can extract, for example, a complete closed contour of of the points. Often we don't have that though, but we can say that the the boundary that we're looking for might be composed of line segments or uh, curve segments, in which case um, we just look for those uh, more s simple types of elements in our uh, edge image. If we don't even have that knowledge, we can just try to find a connected series of uh, edge elements like this. So the more knowledge we have, um, the, the more we rely on the object shape. Otherwise, we just um, we form a chain like that. So let's say we're trying to fit line segments to edge points, uh, and we found a connected chain. One way we can do that is by this um, iterative method of uh, heurist or recursively connecting the endpoints of the chain, finding the uh, point along the chain that is has the largest error to the line segment, and then splitting the chain um, at that point, and then refitting the line segments there. We're going to look at another method for line finding, and that's called the Huff transform. Um, it's actually useful for detecting any parameterized curves, um, such as conex. But for now, I'll just look at line finding. This is uh, has the advantage of being relatively unaffected by gaps and curves and noise. So the best way to think about it is to look at the parameters of a line. So with using the slope intercept form, the equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. So then now we say, OK, if we find a edge point at uh, point x0, y0, all lines that could pass through that point satisfy this equation here, y0 equals m x0 plus b. So basically all the values of m and b that satisfy this equation are candidate lines. Or we could solve for uh, b in, the f in terms of x0 and y0. So the pencil lines passing through x0, y0 would look like this. Um, that equation that I just wrote, b equals minus x0, m plus y0, is an equation of a line. And it's in the space of m and b, where x0 and y0 are constants. So this is the idea of a Huff transform, is that we'll uh, draw those lines in parameter space and then look for intersections. So here are two edge points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Um, the lines that pass through x1, y1 are all the lines satisfying the equation b equals minus x1, m plus y1. So those points lie along this blue line in the m and b space. The lines that pass through x2, y2 are all the lines that satisfy this equation. So those are the points that lie on this red line in m and b space. So where these two lines intersect in m and b space, this uh, particular value of m prime, b prime, 
that's the equation of the line that passes through both points. So, so that's the idea we, as we look for intersections uh, in this space. So digitally, this is how we do it. We create a parameter array or accumulator array that has discrete that represents discrete values such as um, values of m across the horizontal and values of b vertically set all those values to zero then go through the edge image and for each edge point increment all cells all b and m that satisfy this equation so and then we look for local maxima so for example if we have um, these scores in the parameter array after our analysis um, we would say okay this is this is a peak in that space and the 10 means that 10 points voted for this particular line corresponding to this value of m and b now the slope intercept form of the line has some disadvantages namely um, it can't represent um, infinite slopes or vertical lines. So instead we'll use this uh, polar coordinate where we represent a line in terms of theta and rho. So theta, well let me pick rho first. Rho is the vector, it's actually the length of the vector that's the perpendicular to the line from the origin. Theta is the angle of that vector from the x-axis. So we don't have any problem with vertical lines that would just be theta equals zero and we also have constant resolution for our slopes so the parameter array then is uh, represents uh, values of theta and rho and the a point does not generate a line in parameter space now it generates a sinusoidal curve like this but that's okay we can still find intersections of those to find um, our common lines um, in the huff transform um, let's just use these conventions um, let's limit the angle range from minus 90 degrees to plus 89 so that plus 89 would be basically this angle minus 90 would be an angle going up this way the values of rho um, so the largest value of rho we could have would be through a line through this point that was perpendicular um, to this vector here so the length of that vector would be the uh, diagonal of the image so d max would be the diagonal length of the image. So let's look at an example of a point at, uh, let's say, coordinates 50, 100. Um, the line, the vertical line passing through that point has angle 0 because the perpendicular um, is this here, which is aligned with the x-axis. And the row value is just the length of that vector, which is 50. Um, Here's a line passing through the point which is diagonal. The perpendicular to that is this vector here, has an angle of 45 degrees. The length of that vector I can calculate by plugging into the equation for, um, for the line, namely plugging in the x and y coordinates and the value theta 45 degrees. So it comes out to be 75 square root of 2. Um, now this angle is a little trickier. Um, the perpendicular vector to that point is this segment here. However, that segment would have an angle that is more like uh, 135 degrees. And I've limited my angles to be plus or minus basically 90. So to get around that, I'll I'll put the perpendicular vector pointing the opposite way, namely at a angle of minus 45 degrees and then I'll choose the distance to be a negative value. So plugging in the uh, coordinates for x and y and the angle minus 45 I get a, a length for rho which is minus 25 square root of 2. And Finally um, this horizontal line um, again would be a plus 90 um, except we can't represent plus 90. Actually, this should be a minus 90 here, not a plus 90, correction. 
uh, so it has an angle of plus of minus 90 and then a row value uh, negative row value of minus 100.